Good morning ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again with my second video for the day and I'd like to talk about a more interesting topic for those of you who are not interested in the political. So today we are going to be talking about old earth versus new earth. Now when the Mandela Effect started there was a very popular theory that we all died in 2012 and were inserted into a simulation in order to preserve the collective history and the value that us as a race had established over the past. And that seems like a very, very interesting line of thinking to go down when it comes to the Mandela Effect. And as far as the Mandela Effect is concerned, it's not like most topics where there's any solid information to go on other than our observations. And that leads you down a very dangerous path of a lot of people declaring that they know something without having any tangible proof. So before we go any further, everything I am about to present to you is my opinion and not founded in any scientific or factual manner, okay? So now that we're clear on that, I want to discuss what I think is actually going on and we're going to use the old earth versus new earth analogy. But before we go there, I want everybody to come with me on a little journey and we're going to have to go down this line of thinking before we progress forward so you understand where I'm coming from. Now everybody I'm assuming has used a word or text based document on their computer and if any of you guys are familiar with what I think is going on with the Mandela effect I am a firm believer that we ourselves are living inside of a simulation and that in fact coincides perfectly with my belief in a flat earth and the reason being is because if you were going to design something with programming and code the easiest and most efficient way to do so with processor power etc etc doesn't matter what kind of system you're using you're going to conserve things the best way to do it is rendering it on a flat and level plane and not having to deal with the mathematics and physics when it comes to a curved reality so let's keep this in mind when I'm referring to this text-based document on your computer it's because I'm relating it to our existence inside of a computer system of our own. So anybody that's used a text document knows for a fact that if you don't save a document and you constantly just delete the text that's on it and write new text, if you do this long enough, you will run into an effect known as ghosting. And what happens is, is because that program has been running for so long without being refreshed, for some reason, the programming becomes corrupt and characters will start showing up on that page that you're working on that you yourself haven't inserted and there's no reason for them to be there. Now, if you try to explain this logically and actually look at what's going on with the code and the processing inside of this system, it shouldn't be happening, okay? And what that tells me is, even with the coding that we ourselves devise, there is a magic there that we do not understand. All magic is is a technology that's not yet been explained. If we can't understand where these artifacts are coming from, this ghosting effect, how it's being rendered and why it's being created and generated, we have an issue. Now, when these problems happen, you end up talking to an IT guy. Now sometimes an IT guy can solve the problem and give you a logical explanation as to why things are going on and you can get back to work by just fixing something and you don't have to restart your computer. I've done IT work, even if it's on a very basic level, I've done it. Now, when worse comes to worse, as an IT guy, when you hit the wall, or even before you hit the wall, a lot of the times I would do this just to see if it fixed the problem without me having to do any work at all. What I would tell the people when they were having issues is I would tell them, reboot your system and see if that fixes the problem. Now, a lot of times it will fix the problem, but what happens in the process is when that problem started and we started seeing the artifacting and the ghosting effects, etc., etc., when you reboot the system, everything reverts back to the original form before that artifacting started to occur a lot of the time. 
Now, I want to take things into our reality and compare this to the Mandela effect and what we are witnessing. What if we ourselves are witnessing the ghosting or the artifacting or the changing and manifestation and manipulation of data that we perceive? What, or what if it's the other way around and the process has already happened and everything we remember occurred during Okay, so the memories that we have of like the Captain Crunch box being written out C-A-P-T-A-I-N, right? What if in fact all our memories, because you have to realize anybody that knows about the Mandela Effect, it's probably one or two generations of people, right? So what if the Mandela Effect took place one or two generations ago and in 2012 the system was rebooted and the reason we're seeing all of these manifestations and manipulations and changes in the world we're seeing is because things are being reverted back to their natural state. It could be either or. We could be existing inside of the anomalous ghosting period right now inside of our simulation where things are starting to manipulate and be changed, right? Or we can be in the process of the system being rebooted and we're just witnessing the after effects of everything going back to normal. Either way, it leads me to the same conclusion that the best case scenario in my mind is what we're witnessing is simply an IT guy rebooting our system and everything going back to normal. Now, the worst case scenario is the artifacting and ghosting of this program started in 2012 and it started because we are at the end of the cycle and life cycle of our program and it's going to have to be rebooted soon or it's going to become inoperable. Just plain and simple, think about it. If you leave that text document open and it's rendering all kinds of characters everywhere, every time you look at it, what use is it? If you write down your to-do list and you come back five minutes later and your to-do list is turned into frickin' Egyptian hieroglyphs, what use is it? If one day we wake up and everything has changed so much that we ourselves don't know how to operate inside of this new system, how do we survive? And what we have to realize is, if this is the case and we ourselves are living in a simulation, what is the creator of that simulation going to do when faced with that problem? Think of it like this, if we were running a Sims game, which is nothing more than a watered down version of what I'm talking about, the Sims that everybody plays, right? Do we really care if things get so screwed up in that world? that we're going to lose sleep over those characters going through annihilation and a whole bunch of bullshit. No, we don't lose sleep over that. In fact, there's a feature in that game where you can bring down and rain destruction. All seven freaking catastrophes rain down by God and all of that, etc., etc. Create an entire apocalypse for those people and it's considered fucking entertainment. So think about it from that perspective for a moment. If you were the creator of our simulation, what I'm trying to get at on a base level here is the creator of this simulation may very well have a very big vested interest in what goes on because obviously he's interested in what's going on or they or whatever it is is interested in what's going on or we wouldn't have been created, this wouldn't be a unique system, we wouldn't be at the center of everything within this system unless we were put here for a purpose. However, if the simulator knows, if the guy designing the simulation knows eventually it's gonna deteriorate, it explains exactly what we have been taught and we've seen through this hidden history we've been uncovering. What we've noticed is we are going through cycles. Civilizations eventually get to a certain point and then they are restarted and everything changes. And it seems as though the system goes through an upgrade. Look at the Tower of Babel, for example. They reach the pinnacle of a certain technology and then all of a sudden, 
everything changes and it's reset. Now, if you don't think of the Earth as a physical place, rather a simulation, of course people are going to think they are in the same place. Okay, because technically they are. It's based on the same engine, you know? Like, Madden 18 is the same as Madden 19 as far as the graphics are concerned. However, the details are different, correct? Now, when you import an entire team's fucking uniform, right? You take that uniform from last year and you just apply it to the new system. Now, let's just say you did that with the entire personality of that character and that character actually existed and could think and had consciousness. If you were to take that character from Madden 18 and move him over to Madden 19, yes, there would be some tiny details, but in premise, they wouldn't know that they actually changed location. So what if, for example, the Tower of Babel gets to the point where they're almost ready to reach the throne of God or the barrier of the simulation, etc., etc., okay? What happens if they get to that point and all of a sudden the simulator's like, oh, I can't deal with this anymore. So he turns the system off that's going on right now and he takes all of the data, all of the characters, all of the, you know, emotion, the consciousness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and what he does is he creates a new simulation based on the same engine using the same exact layout for the world, right? And all he does is insert all of that information into the new system, flip the switch, turn it on again, and all of a sudden there's a new timeline started and the details all are, are all completely different. Okay? Now this is something we have to wake up to as a real possibility. We can't turn a blind eye to this fact when we look at the universe and we try to break things down mathematically based on our observations and we realize that the same exact code we use in the internet for error correcting. So when you're sending packets through the internet, for example, from PlayStation to your fucking PlayStation network to your PlayStation, they send it in packets. Packet by packet, that data goes from PlayStation network to my house. And in that process, you are inevitably going to lose packets. Now, based on the way that things are developed and worked and the way the coding is written, if you lose one of those packets, it's rather predictable to determine what that packet was designed to do. And we developed an algorithm and a code that allows the system to recreate what that packet was supposed to be and insert it into the equation even though it never received it from PlayStation. Okay? And this right here is a basic principle. There is no denying this. Now what I am saying is, if there are packets that are being delivered, manipulating certain aspects of our reality, we have to realize that things are a lot more similar to the internet. So what I'm saying is we developed this code to we developed this code to reinsert those packets into the equation. Now when we look at our universe, right, we see the same exact code written into everything we see around us. All the information we see around us, the universe has a code to replace those dropped packets within our reality. It is the same exact code binary number for number the same as the code we developed for the internet now the funny thing is is we had no idea that this code existed when we wrote the original code for the internet what are the odds of that now what this tells you is there is no denying that we ourselves live inside of a programmed system god is of the most magnificent coder there is no arguing this in my opinion, if you look at the holy book and the Bible and you break it down into numerology and you start looking at that text as code, because what's very interesting about the Hebrew language is that every letter also represents a number. So therefore, the entire Bible could be looked at as a computer program in and of itself. And therefore, it can be decoded. And what's interesting is when you do start decoding this book, you start to realize very quickly that there is way too many coincidences for this to be mere happenstance. What I'm telling you is, 
Everything around you is nothing more than a code. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, if we're living inside of a system that is all written out and coded, do we really have free will or is there predestined outcomes, okay? Is our outcome predestined? I can't give you the answer to that. My question for you, rather, is when you end up going and you play a simulation like The Sims, is everything planned out and pre-written after you design those people and you insert them into your little world? No. If you leave them to their own thing, you have no idea of predicting what is going on. The only way you can predict is what's going on unless you start manipulating or influencing that simulation. So the only way to really answer the question of if there's free will or not is to look at what the creator's doing and figure out if the creator is manipulating our reality in order to lead things one way or another. And the answer I have to say to this one is a little bit of both. When it comes down to the reality we live in being a free will based system, I think to a certain degree, yes it is. However, if you look at what the holy books tell us, there is clearly a path and a plan for what is happening and everything works in certain cycles. And what's very interesting, especially about that book, is the fact that Revelation says at the time of the apocalypse, which is nothing more than the Great Awakening, the beginning of a new era, everybody thinks of the apocalypse as a destruction of our world, rather it is the creation of a new system. So what I'm trying to get at is, our Holy Bible tells us that everything that is unknown will be brought to light in the days that are the end, and a new system will be created from the rubble of the old. But on top of that, it also tells us there is a clear plan that's already predestined. So I think we are free to influence our will inside of this system However, at the end of the day, I don't think we can stop the inevitable because The Sims, like any other game, will eventually have to come to an end. And whether it be you run out of content and new things to do, or for some reason your game crashes due to ghosting effects because you left it on too long, it's not designed to run forever. And I think we're in somewhat of the same situation where eventually our purpose will become fulfilled and there will be nothing more to learn from observing what is going on here. And I think we've seen this happen before when it comes to the different life cycles. Now, with any computer system, you have to realize the data that has been overwritten is always retrievable. And I think this is why we see throughout history over and over again, every time one of these civilizations is reset, we manage to hold on to just a little bit of the technology, information, and knowledge that was taught to us before, and we lost in the reset. So if the FBI comes into your house, and unless you're Hillary Clinton and acid wash your computer, Let's just say you wipe your hard drive by fucking overwriting it with a new OP or whatever operating system, right? <clears throat> the FBI is going to be able to come in and pull up every bit of information that you had prior to that. Now, let's say that you go to extraordinary lengths and you're an amateur. There's no way even an amateur is going to be able to erase everything. They're going to find metadata to work off of and eventually be able to find out what you did. So what I'm trying to get at is, even though we're inside of a new system, we still have the ability to tap into at least a little bit of the information that was left over. Because as I stated before, I very much believe that the physical world around us is what is updated, not so much as the collective consciousness of us, okay? We may very well 
be upgraded and changed to a certain degree and we may have our base hardware wiped and a new sole layered over top of it however there is going to be traces of what was there before for us to tap into and i think certain people are able to do this on a much deeper level and people like Nikola Tesla that tapped into the Tartar technology and Adolf Hitler and people like this are examples of what I'm talking about. Now, I could go on rambling about this subject forever. However, I'm going to leave things here. I'm actually about to get done with my route. I have to stop, get gas, and everything else. So what I'm going to do from here is offer a new suggestion. Instead of me picking these subjects, I'm going to leave things to you, and my next video is going to be based on the first person I see offer me a subject. The video after that is going to be the next person that offers me a subject to look into, so on and so forth. Like, comment, subscribe, share, embed my videos everywhere you want. They're there for you to use however you see fit. Thank you. Have a wonderful and beautiful weekend. God bless you and your family.